Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today we're talking about an outside corner joint with MIG welding. And the way you get ripples in a weld, or the ripples are freeze lines. With MIG welding, it's the way you manipulate the torch. With TIG welding, it's usually the addition of rod. Each time you add rod, it creates a freeze line, and that creates a distinct ripple in the puddle and gives you that stack of dimes look that... Uh, that is sought after, especially in certain industries. But today we're talking about MIG welding and how to make MIG welding have those uh, ripples that, uh, that everyone likes, the evenly spaced ripples. And we're doing an outside corner joint. And it's quarter inch, uh, quarter inch thick bar stock here that we're using. And I'm tacking them up corner to corner, pretty much dead corner to corner on the inside, just with a tack on each end. And we're going to talk about uh, two different techniques, and we're going to slice and dice and etch today. I always take a dry run when I'm setting up something like this to see if I'm going to be out of position or uncomfortable when I get to the end. And I usually prop on my pinky and stretch my hand out like this. And you can see I'm in kind of a bind at the end of that weld. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to move my pinky a little bit to where I'm on just a little bit of a bind at the beginning of the weld. And then after an inch or two, I'm comfortable. And then at the end, I'm still not out of, a, out of position. All right, this is a technique that I would normally probably use. I set the machine up good and hot and trace the puddle, tracing that front edge of the puddle, bringing that wire to the front edge of the puddle where it bites in really good. And I've got it hot enough that it just uh, melts those corners off. No problem keeping a short stick out. And that's what it looks like at the end, which is really not a problem. It looks fine. But today I'm kind of experimenting, trying to get more evenly stacked ripples, like a stack of dime effect. And so I'm using this little T technique where I'm coming down into the root, and then coming back up and crossing the T. Another little angle up here, down into the root. Now I've turned the machine down quite a bit. This is a Hobart uh, 210 MVP that I'm using, 035 wire, and I turned the machine down two clicks on the voltage tap and the wire feed speed down quite a bit as well. And I just want to see if a weld like this that is, is nice and pretty, but with a uh, you know, stacked dime look, can be as good as just setting it up hotter and using the other technique. So those are the two techniques and what I did is I sliced and diced them here and uh, I'm going to polish and etch. So I got a sander, I took it down to about 80 grit. The finer you polish the better it'll etch. Then I used a little uh, swab etch solution that is used to remove heat tent on stainless steel. Dynaflux makes it and, and several other companies make it. Most of any of those heat tent removers will etch carbon steel pretty nicely and you can see that weld nugget reveal like that that's the hot one you can see it, it it penetrated pretty much all the way down into the corner with no void and uh, melted those corners off and left a nice weld profile there and the one where I turned it down I'll swab it now and we'll see what we got there and as that starts to reveal you can see it's a slightly different profile with a little spike down in the corner where I pulled the arc ahead down into the corner and then backed up. However, still still adequate penetration for most applications. You won't get full penetration on a quarter inch joint like this unless you gap it or use you know a really hot spray transfer or anything. So sometimes you can get the penetration with technique instead of just uh, heat and amperage. So if you're watching this on YouTube, there's a blue link under this in the description box, the one that says starts off with HTTP, and that one will take you to my website where you can see the uh, precise voltage settings and wire feed settings and the differences and, and some extra stuff. All right, well, thanks for watching.